Hey everybody, um, this is going to be my video to show you me redoing my control panel with the new art. Um, what I've done so far is just I've traced out where the holes are going to be on the plexiglass. They're kind of rough just to give me an idea. What I want to try to do instead of trying to drill out a whole other board, I want to see how far the buttons are off from this one. If they're off at a great distance, it's going to still be okay because I can just move the buttons wherever in the and the overlay will cover up the holes, so it won't be that big a deal. But um, the next step that I got, now that I've got this all traced out, when I, I had to pull the protective layers off of it to uh, to see through because the control panel is kind of dark, the overlay is, and looking through the layers of the blue plastic, I couldn't see it very well. So, And it, it's okay. It's, it's dangerous when you drill through them without the protective layers because you, you run the potential to scratch them and just in handling it in general you can really scratch one up if you're not careful but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take and disassemble this uh, control panel all the way down except for uh, the plexiglass and the board and the overlay that's in it already I'm just going to pull all the joysticks and the buttons out now I can hold this up over it and, and get a good idea of where everything goes. Um, removal of the buttons and joysticks is actually pretty simple. Um, the cherry switches, I'll just pull all of those loose and lay the wiring aside. I have uh, four screws holding my eye pack in, which is just two there and two there. And I'll just pull that off and take all the cherry switches loose and they're actually rather easy to get off. You don't even need a tool. They just uh, pry off like that. And and that's it. And once I get the cherry switches loose, that's with the exceptions of the ones on the joysticks. The joysticks ones are all retained with two screws. But to make that easier, I'm probably just going to unplug them. Because the wires are all zip-tied. And I can tell where they're going to go. But also, secondly, I'm, I'm probably going to redo the wiring and do like a step-by-step -step to show you guys how to do it because I've had that requested. And plus, when I did Tyler's, it came out a lot neater than mine, and I'm just a little bit jealous. So I'm going to do mine a lot neater this time. Um, that's it. Um, to take your joysticks out, there's lots of videos to see how to do it. Um, your main man, for instance, has one. Um, you just take out this... Uh, this... Uh, circular pin right here you pop it off the bottom of the joystick and it'll release the top of the joystick be careful because you'll drop a couple of these pieces in here and they can fall out make sure you pay attention to which way they go back together and then just the four screws that hold it to the board and that takes all of the hardware completely off um, but it, it, it's fairly simple I'm gonna cut away I'm gonna pull everything off and then I'll I'll pick up there Okay, I've got the wiring off pretty much of the control panel. This is all the cherry switches and everything. I left them still connected to the eye pack and all that. And just pulled them all off. And uh, here's the control panel without the wiring. I just, like I said, I just left the cherry switches on the joysticks on uh, just for easier removal or whatever, you know. Um, I decided I was going to go ahead and give you a quick how to on how to get these joysticks loose. You can see the pin right here. And so I'm going to try to do this one handed. It's actually very simple. Um, just take your screwdriver in there, a flathead screwdriver, twist it and pry it out. And as you see, it flew off. My next tip is going to be to tell you to watch where the hell it goes. And then uh, the joystick should come free. You should be able to pull the, the stick assembly out the top, which I have right here. Keep in mind your spacer placement and, and all that. And uh, this right here can come off if you choose to pull it out, but these are still pretty new and it'll stay there. Um, and that's about it. Now, all I have to do to take it loose is take these four screws out and it'll come loose. And uh, as you can see from the top right there, that was it. And now I'm going to cut away and uh, find the pin I just lost and take the other one out with two hands so I don't make that mistake again. Um, removing your buttons is pretty simple. It takes uh, a little bit of force with your fingers but you just unscrew the nut and 
that'll release the button from the other side. Just push it out. And that's how you get the buttons out. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them all and pull both the joysticks off, and then I'll come back and we'll see how that plexi lines up. Okay, I've got all the hardware removed from the control panel now. See it all just piled up over here. And uh, here we go, it's all bare. And I have not even tried yet to see how close this is, but give you an idea, there's the new one. And as we can see, it all lines up real nice. So now we'll get an idea of where we stand on this one and how far off all the buttons are. It uh, It's a lot closer than I thought. Unfortunately though, I don't know if it's going to be usable because they're almost too close. Um, it's, it's a lot easier to drill a hole the entire hole than to try to widen a hole or something like that so it looks like I'm going to have to go get another piece of wood cut and then we'll go from there but uh, I'll continue on there thanks for watching okay everybody um, I got my piece of wood cut and you see down here and I've got my plexiglass clamped down to it um, these are just cheap little clamps you can buy at Walmart. They do the job great. If you put you know three or four of them on there, it'll hold it with enough force. Um, your MK Arcade Source, aka your main man, has showed you guys the proper way to drill holes in your plexiglass. He uses a drill press and everything, and takes his time. Unfortunately, I'm not. Um, I don't have any access to a drill press, so I was going to show you guys what I use. It's just a just a hole saw bit, you know, for your. Uh, normal household drill. Um, you have to be careful which ones of these you get. Make sure you get a multi-material one. Uh, this one's for metal and wood. And uh, some like it at a high speed and some like it at a low speed. I have another one of these that you know you gotta really practice on a, a spare piece and see how it is and you really gotta make sure you hit it dead on straight. If you don't it's gonna grab it, it's gonna crack it, it could possibly hurt you and, and you know it'll also tear up your uh, your plexiglass. It, it took me a lot of tries to get good at using that style of bit. But again, you know, you, you got to practice on a spare sheet. Get your old scrap piece and scrap piece of wood, set it off to the side, and, and run it through a few times. Um, I would uh, videotape me doing them, but unfortunately, I only have two hands and I don't have a tripod for my camera. So, but uh, I just wanted to show you what I was using and, and what setup I had. That you you can in fact do it with one of these, but. Again, practice, practice, practice on a, a spare piece somewhere and, and make sure you know what you're doing before you go and attempt it on the regular one. Okay, here you go. You can see uh, that I got all the holes drilled out now. And uh, every one of them came out perfect. Not a splinter, not a crack, nothing, nowhere. Um, whenever you get done drilling these, you have that instinct and that urge to wipe this if you don't have anything protective on it like the layer that, that they they give it to you with when you go to get a piece cut um, don't wipe it it'll scratch it by all means do not wipe it you'll probably want to take it and maybe wash it off with some water or something and then just you know dry it up with some towels real softly nothing that can snag because on, on each one of these fresh holes you drill they're not sanded they're not smooth and they're if you flop this thing you know like try to shake the stuff off it'll crack um, it, it's very sensitive until you get it down on something to where it ain't going to crack. Um, if you notice too, I don't drill all the way through. Uh, one reason why I like that, that style bit that I use is uh, it leaves a hole in the wood, you know, obviously from the pilot bit. And uh, what you can do is when you pull this off, then you can take it, just stick it right back in that hole and finish the, the cut through the wood without having to worry about any further damage to the plexiglass. When you're doing your plexi, you just want to get it done as fast as possible and out of the way before you have time to fuck it up. Because trust me, if it will happen, if it can, it will. And, and I mean, it will. So definitely, especially with my luck. So um, just cut right through the plexiglass as soon as you get done cutting through the plexi. 
lift your drill bit out and start on the next one to just get them all done. And uh, you know, shift your clamps around right where you're cutting so that it holds it firm and tight because it'll have a tendency to jump up every now and again. All right, um, there's no need in you guys seeing me finish drilling the wood. I'll just uh, cut away and I'll, I'll pick up inside.